morning. Tuesday. A little bit of a funny one today. The weather this evening. So Tuesday is normally Tuesday night here from. The weather this evening is meant to be super iffy. So I'm going to cut my losses and do something I've been threatening to do for a while. A camera shootout. An audio shootout. It's pretty windy. Could be a little bit rainy. That kind of stuff. I really want to test out the two Canon cameras, the GoPro and the iPhone against each other on the bike. What's the best solution for audio and also video as well? There's going to be a lot of content from this. Team kits are arriving today as well. I might throw that in at the end. One way or another, there's a lot going on today. Let's get on the bike and shoot some video. Okay, great example of the challenges with the G9X. I've just tried to record twice there and I didn't know I wasn't recording. Without the screen at the top, it makes it very difficult to frame and even know if you're recording. I think I accidentally pressed a button that put me in some retro mode or something. But, you know, the, the reality is this is a much lighter designed point and shoot, so, you know, less cumbersome in the back pocket for me. Okay, last test for the G9X. Super windy, 30 k's an hour, ambient traffic noise. Yeah, this, this a real challenge for a camera. I'd be surprised if I'm getting much here. Okay. The Canon G7X. In all honesty, probably slightly less wind than last time I was here. G9X. So this is not running any wind protection. I'm literally just running the screen and hoping that's doing enough. Okay, slightly backlit, but again, I can frame myself no problem. This is interesting. We've got a digger here. The other thing that's a bonus here is definitely just the functionality of getting the, the camera out and starting to record. This is windy. This is really windy. Crosswind. Ambient noise. <laughs> I got an aeroplane flying over my head. It couldn't get worse than this. The other, whoa. The other reason I really wanted to test this is I'm very it's so windy. I'm very conscious of how expensive this camera is and having it in my back pocket day in day out something will go wrong. So I'm keen to have alternatives. Hence we're now going to try the GoPro and then the iPhone. I would never talk to camera in that. It was so windy. Okay, GoPro Hero 5. Uh, 1080p, 90 frames a second. Yeah, we've actually lost a bit of wind here. There's not much traffic noise, Howdy. Won't be any traffic noise going the other way. So this is actually borderline lovely conditions. Be very surprised if we struggle for audio here. I do know that I'm recording because of the countdown. I can't obviously frame myself I don't have a screen. The massive thing with the GoPro is just how rugged it is. You know, I know it's expensive, but you can just throw it out of your pocket, drop it, whack the, it's so easy to turn on, you can get the shot. You can hand it to a mate to get a shot and they know what they're doing. It's literally one button. Okay, here we go. Iron Cove Bridge. We're at arm's length. Windy as hell. So with the GoPro, you do get an option to permanently set it on a wind reducing option. The problem with that is if you, there is no wind, it just mutes everything, which is no good at all. It is very windy here. So like I said, functionality of this is just second to none. The question is though, can you hear anything I am saying? Probably not. We'll see. It brings us to the iPhone. Rear camera. I'm gonna try the front camera against the rear camera because they are different. I think the audio solutions with both are different. So obviously can't frame myself. Functionality is a bit awkward actually setting it up. Good bit of traffic coming the other way. Good bit of wind. This will be interesting to see how it performs. Obviously the advantage of the iPhone is the fact that you've pretty much always got it with you. Functionality of actually shooting on the rear, it's not that easy. You don't know if you're actually recording. You know, sometimes it records in portrait, which just completely destroys the shot. On wind bridge, finding it very difficult to 
work out where the frame is here. I have a feeling I'm just shooting a lot of arm. It's quite windy now. Right on the nose. I think one of those two. Last test. iPhone. Front camera. Obviously can frame myself here. We've got old mate behind me. There he is. Not really sure what the quality of the iPhone 5's front facing camera is. We will find out. Super easy though, functionality much better. My guess is that the wind correction is going to be better on the front facing. We'll see. Here we are back lit, crosswind, ambient traffic noise. That's quite loud. Really do hope the quality here is, is manageable because that's, that's quite a nice shot. Um, and the audio audio is going to be the struggle. Now I'm backlit but it's, that's handling that well and being able to actually frame it is a massive difference. The death test again up on uh, the Iron Cove Bridge. Traffic noise, wind noise. A lot of people just looking at me like I've completely lost my brain. Including those people. So yeah, look, functionality in the front facing camera. Superb, brilliant. challenge will be is there actually any audio on that shot I don't know so that's it that's the the two cannons the GoPro and both the iPhone cameras let's go home and talk about it hey really really surprising results there Canon Canon GoPro phone with the first Canon as I said on the bike it didn't actually record those first few shots that I was getting which is just part of the review at the end of the day, that's the reality of it, right? Overall, what I was really surprised with was that second shot, which I think in hindsight is a crosswind. It was like a cross tailwind, was what they all performed worse at. The GoPro just died on that section. I know I'm using these specific cameras. I think they represent four different sections of cameras that go across many brands. I mean, that is your standard point and shoot. That's your action camera. That's your phone. That's your step up semi-professional DLSR type thing. So let's just quickly go through them. I, th I thought this performed well audio wise, probably due to the solution, but it just didn't focus on me going across the Iron Cove Bridge. And like, that's pretty much the whole shot ruined. So this just produces the best shot. It's the easiest to shoot, I think this camera with the wind protector is going to be the the best quality but puts me straight back in the position that i was saying at the beginning which is i'm kind of lugging around this super expensive camera that was not the point of this we know that's the best camera i will still probably ride with it the most but what's next the gopro performed really well under the brutal conditions across the iron Cove bridge but struggled in the easy conditions which for me almost makes this worse because now I don't know where to use it. It also was quite unsteady. I was using this to make the shot a bit steadier, but it was quite an unsteady shot. The iPhone rear camera performed okay, but inconsistently. I just don't think that's an option for me. The actual getting it out and flipping it around and holding it like this is quite awkward. The front facing camera performed really well in the conditions that I thought it would pre perform well in and performed terribly in shot. the Iron Coke Bridge Again. section. Where am I going to go from here? I will still ride with this most of the time. I will risk this on maybe longer 200, 200k days. I'll always carry this. I think this is probably the loser from the whole thing. The inconsistency of, of it bothers me. This brings me on to testing this versus the Fly 12. The point of the action camera is to be mounted and get the sort of, you know, the front facing or rear facing shots. For the vlog, we'll stick with this, put the sound deflector on it and go from there. Corn, Brussels corn. Now for anyone still watching, I'm sure there's about three of you. Team kits just arrived. I have to show you a couple of things. Oh, let's get these down here. These are the, the road jerseys and the latest Neuro 
bibs. The customer ones are coming. Light delay is I made some changes to these team ones and I just want to make sure, they're minor changes, but I just wanted to make sure that they are bang on before we go for the pre-sale on the customer kits. We're talking days. We are now talking days. But seriously, check these updates out. Right, so jersey. So this is the lighter jersey, right? So the pockets, the pocket material is now a carbon weaved one. It's now different. See, there you go. You can see it's different. I'll hold this steady. It's different to the back, which is that beautiful light material, but we've just got a slightly more robust material now on the pocket. We'll test that tonight, but I'm really, really pleased with that. Inside out bib now. There's the textured lycra. Now look at that stitching. Look, but that's lycra porn for me. That's stitching porn. So that is just pure class. Professional lighting here, this is pretty cool. Okay, so that was a big, big session, big day. I'm gonna probably do Tuesday Night Heifer on a ride tonight. I'll get some footage from it. We might put it in for tomorrow. Not sure what the rules on that are, but we'll just do that. As I said, with the customer release kits, we're days away now, so stay tuned, guys. Keep the comments coming, loving it. See you later.